Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is going to be a ESDoc show. It's going to basically describe or explain how to change and edit the, the cameras. Only the basics though, I'm not going to go through the install unless um, someone wants me to do that. They can put that in the comments. Um, one thing before we start is that once you have installed it, you need to go to the uh, file, wherever it may be on your computer. I haven't got a, a shortcut for it. But you go to the ESCAR file and then it'll be config.exe. So open up this and then we click a configure FSX. So anytime, as soon as you've installed it, you hit this. Or anytime you install a brand new aircraft, you hit this. And it'll ask us if we want to do a wizard for the world cameras. Now, personally, I don't use world cameras because my computer is not the best. With the FSX being as power hungry as it is, it'll just go to a world camera that's the opposite side of the planet from your plane is. It's just going to ask for trouble when the program is trying to load a load of stuff you don't really need so I'll try and avoid them so if you want to go for it by all means I think it's just a basic wizard you've got to select where a few files are and that's it but I'm going to hit no and within a few seconds it's configured everything that's uh, loaded up in my FSX okay so that's done and then we'll now load up FSX and have a look hi guys so we've now loaded up FSX um, in the iFly 737 I'm going to use this as my example we're changing around a few cameras. It's only going to be a basic guide, like I said. There's a few detailed bits I want to make videos on later. But first of all, we're going to open up the studio. So there we are. You can see we're connected, we're active, so we're all enabled. Now it's already recognised I'm in a Boeing 737, which is a medium type of aircraft. Cockpit walls are selected is on, so any camera movement I use within the cockpit, the camera's only going to go as far as the cockpit walls. You can turn this on or off depending on what your uh, preferences are. Now we need to go into uh, define keys and buttons. These are the default keys and buttons you're given. Now, as you can probably see, some of these are going to clash with the FSX view commands. But if you're using SDOC, that basically negates the need to use FSX command settings. So this will become your new viewing system within the in within FSX. So you need to go into FSX and delete all the all the commands that are going to clash with what you've got here and I've changed these these are these are, these are default and these I've chosen myself so I've used the ones that are in FSX for this so next camera S would be S if every time you hit S you'd be flicking through this this category now if you go back to if you hit A A will take you to the next category so hit A and you'll take you over to the aircraft camera set uh, air, aircraft camera cameras then shift A will take you back to virtual cockpit so A and shift A will cycle me through these I do not want to go as far as that because that will just take me to the other side of the world or something stupid and I'll be loading up millions of bits of scenery and data that I do not need and it's just going to jam up my computer and I'm it's game over so the only there's no way of locking this off the only way you can lock this off is just to be mindful of what you're doing so if you're hitting A and you hit it one too many times you're going to go and hit world or if you're hitting shift A and you hit it too many times you're going to go back and then hit world so what you can do is you can make a, a key a shortcut key which are here you've got a keyboard option and a joystick option so you can have a keyboard option for pilot which I've put home so every time I hit home it's going to go straight to pilot camera so that will then take me into this category then if I hit end which I've got for left wing that will take me into the aircraft category so then I don't really need to use A and shift A I can just use them two keys end and home and they'll take me into them categories and then S and shift S will cycle me up and down same with joystick button to do exactly the same so to do that you literally just click in there hit what you want to use job done so that's that um, what we've also got to do or I want to tell you about is um, these we've got point to point so if you've got that selected that'll make a smooth transition between cameras like so if you turn it off that'll literally just go A to B which is again that's personal preference 360 if you've got mouse lock on which is this button here so every time the mouse moves the camera will follow that'll give you full 360 view of what you're looking at mouse look is handy with, um, for virtual cockpits but it can be a little bit annoying at times so if you want to you can turn that off hit middle mouse button and then if as long as you've got the mouse button held down that will just keep following through and then if you let go that will then um, stop the camera moving so that's one way of doing it sometimes if you've got mouse lock on you everywhere the mouse goes you're following and it's like well it's too much um, point of view that's another viewing system not really used 
Um, zoom, that allows you to um, zoom in and out with the mouse wheel, like so. Then track IR, that's if you've got IR, track IR connected, which I haven't. I wish I had one. And then these are random effects. These are the ones I'm going to get into more detail later because these um, require a bit more tuning. Now I've got them selected, although I don't really need to because they're not really set up yet. So if you hit, if you right mouse click on there, this gives you the whole, the tweaking system basically for ground profile. Um, I've got an air profile as well. I haven't really done much reading on this. I need to look into this and decipher what the hell's going on. And then I'm going to do a separate video just for this bit because this is going to take a little bit of time, I think. There's loads of different limited settings to look at. So we'll leave that for now. But what they are is a you've got a random. That just makes it random movements of camera. Basically trying to link it with the movement of the aeroplane, turbulence, landing, takeoff banking etc dynamic head movement that tries to mimic the, the the captain's head movement as everything goes on in the environment and we got this one which again is like a similar thing to dynamic head movement they're just all different settings different tweaks to try and make it a bit more realistic in the cockpit and outside because these can be applied to the aircraft cameras as well so to edit one we've got pilot set up here so if I just say for instance I'm going to edit this one we hit numlock 2 should hear the chime that means you're now in edit mode so if we now um, we've got the mouse to look around so you can pick a point of view and you've got the, le the arrow keys move up and down left and right back and forwards and then page up page down now you can see this is moving pretty damn quick which is not to everyone's cup of tea so then you hit two again and the chime stops now whenever you hit two again that will be the saved camera now if we go into general settings here this gives you basically virtual cockpit settings, aircraft settings and world settings for the cameras. So we've got a speed in the virtual cockpit of 0.19 which is quite fast for the mouse and then 3.5 for the keyboard so that's on walk I believe. Put it on float it slows everything back down a bit so for editing you might want to hit float just so you've got a bit more control over what's going on but then in the actual once you've set the cameras up and you want to move around you're in the middle of the middle of a busy time and period you want to hit might want to put it onto walk but you can change these you can walk like that preference whatever you need but I'm going to put them on float for now close that down let's see the difference hit two again it's a bit more smoother the arrow keys will move a little bit better so you can see the difference just from the presets so I put that back to where we wanted it so I say left and right the arrow keys as a default, we'll move the camera left and right on an axis up and backwards and forwards, or forward and backwards on the uh, arrow keys. Page down is down, page up is up. Zoom, that works. Normally they set it at 0.4 as default on this dock, but you can again, like I say, like most things on here, you can change it to your preference. So if you put the captain's view like that, hit 2 again, chime stops, that's that edited. Go to overhead, I'm happy with that one. Let's try the throttle one. Right, so we've got throttle down here, so let's just have another go at this one. I want to be able to see everything in here so I can hit the cutoff switches. And it's nice to see a little bit of information on the screens as you're down there because you're not going to be able to see out the window much. There's a dash 8 in the background there. Um, so let's hit this again. We've got two for edit. We're going to have a little play around. We're going to move back a bit, move left. Maybe try and get a bit more view over there. Let's just tweak it a bit and then we can also get access there to the um, MCP as well. If you are down there, you don't want to keep swapping cameras. Two again, save. So that's that then. Now you notice there's a C here. So if you turn this C off, it basically means that camera will be skipped when you're hitting the S button. So let's go from MCP. That should now skip right to FMC. So we hit S. Yeah, straight to FMC. Turn these back on again. And it should cycle back through. S. There we go. Then shift S. There we go. So that's how that works. Same said for the aircraft view, exactly the same. Hit 2, time will start kicking in, move what you want to move around. Walk around, I've got that on absolutely everything because this is like your, your freedom camera. So if you're at the airport, you want to see what's going on, bit of an environment, bit of spotting. Or if, you're out, if you're in the air and you want to, you've got a good opportunity for a screenshot, you want to move, see where you're going, nice bit of scenery, nice bit of weather, all that sort of stuff. That's a nice camera to have get back into the cockpit now as well as having I mean I've got two buttons here so I don't venture into world but if you wanted to have these rather than cycle through which can be a bit hectic especially in busy periods SSSSS you're trying to find the right screen oh you've gone one too far shift there straight back again 
if you wanted to, like for, for this plane, a lot of planes in FSX, they have a system of shift 1, shift 2, shift 3, shift 4, bring up different 2D panels, etc. or give you different views. If you were, if you, and again, you should be able to disable them in most most aircraft, so then there's nothing. And then what you can then do is, rather than use shift 1 for the internals of the plane as it's programmed, you can then delete all them, or disable them, and then you could have each each camera is allowed its own keyboard sh shortcut or joystick shortcut so you could have shift 1 as pilot, shift 2 as overhead, shift 3 as MCP and do it that way if that's your preferred way then you know oh, well, I need to go over there quick you can skip a load of cameras then without having to flip and cycle through the whole the whole cabin so that's just the basic outline of what what, what is done hopefully that's covered everything you need to know if you've got any questions don't hesitate to put some comments in the in the in the comments below um, I'll try and be as helpful as I can I'm going to try and do another video like I said for the more complex parts of it but that should be enough to get you started you've got to make sure that SDOC is enabled if you've got disable option there it means it's a, it is enabled and like if you show the studio again it says it's connected and it's active and that would shine up if track IR was connected so hopefully that's been alright for you guys if not please don't hesitate to ask questions and uh, a bit of feedback as always is much appreciated um, i look forward to seeing you in the next video thank you very much